I believe I'm focused, I'm determined, and I'm relentless. I realized in this kind of work you cannot give up. Even on the days when it gets hard, you must. But on the other hand, I believe I'm approachable, that I'm able to balance my tough lawyer act, but as well as listening to the victim, which is very important because for you to help those who need help, you must be accessible, but then translate whatever they shared with you into some concrete form of action. My role as Executive Director of FIDA Kenya largely includes strategic linkages and partnership mapping at international, regional and national level, where we ensure that women and girls in Kenya have space, uh, safe spaces, both within access to justice and the women in governance uh, sectors. I think for me the three things that drive me is one, I've had great mentors, mentors who are women and also men who really promote women's rights. Uh, very close to my heart are my parents who from a very early age believed in me, who were ready to sacrifice everything they had and believed in the power of educating a girl. At the second level, I look at now the younger generation, the children who we are leading, those who look up to us, young men and women who really want hope offered to them in this country. And I believe if there's one thing we should dish out in plenty in Kenya, is hope for the younger generation because we are beneficiaries of the sacrifices those who were before us undertook and so for me that's important and then thirdly and most importantly my country I love Kenya I'm proud to be a Kenyan and so in this time and age where I am at in terms of my career as a leader of a premier institution as FIDA every morning I wake up ready to occupy my space because I'm proud of being Kenyan and I'm proud of this country and I'm ready to undertake whatever sacrifice is needed to fill in the space within which I am to take Kenya to the next level. I think respect is fundamental. When I respect your role as a man and you respect my role as a woman, then conflict should not arise because we begin by appreciating that we are all different biologically, but differences are not negative. Differences do, should not make us fight. So we begin from the premise of mutual respect and I emphasize that because our constitution speaks about that. That's what we ascribe to. So I'll tell the young men and women to begin from a fundamental place of respect for each other, mutual respect, that we respect our role within society as young men and as young women, then that eliminates issues such as violence. It eliminates discrimination because there's appreciation of our differences, but that there's strength in our differences. The cost of accessing justice remains high. When you look at an individual case where an in you've been violated, for you to go through the entire journey is expensive. Why? We have cases in court that create a backlog. This means if you're coming from the rural areas, you have to go to court more than 20 times before you can even start seeing the fruits of your judgment. And so for us, the fact that access to justice still remains a very costly affair is one of the biggest hurdles. We should be able to have a system where within two months, a case is determined. It gets even worse when you speak about children and sexual violence because you find a child has to at some point miss class, go and speak about the issue. And our legal system is designed in a way that they have to keep on narrating the story over and over to different people uh, by default, because that is what the law says. So I think the challenges that still remain are around our laws and policies, especially on access to justice, so that we are able to update them, harmonize them, and embrace ideas such as technology. A child should be able to give evidence through a video link and not necessarily see the perpetrator directly in court, which is what happens. And two, they don't have to miss school. And thirdly, through technology, you can even protect their identity. Because when you go to the formal justice system as is, the criminal system does not protect that child effectively. So those are some of the frustrations that we still have to overcome. Of course, I love meeting up with my friends. And I love fashion, you can tell. <laughs> yeah, I, I believe for me fashion is the essence of appreciating, especially women. So even for my ladies who come here, and I learned that, let me just give a small personal journey. When I started my work at, in Mombasa, and I'd get very interested that these ladies would come to the office and they're really 
uh, they're sad and they're belated. But for some reason, the ladies from the coast would always look glamorous. And I got interested. And she's crying, but she looks glamorous. And I remember one lady once told me, you know what, Anne? Even if all my rights are violated, they can't take away my right to look good. <laughs> and I think that's very important. So I think uh, um, it's important that we, and within society, both men and women, it's not a question of money, it's not a question of a budget, it's about dignity. And I think when you dignify someone, they feel good and they work well and they, they're happy about themselves. And once we feel good about ourselves, then we make others feel better. Yeah, so and I mean I enjoy going out, traveling to new places and just meeting new people. Yeah. <coughs> Besides that, I'm also a lady of faith, so I spend quite some time within my church and uh, that gives me grounding. In this work you need a strong support system and my faith is one of those. I believe that for females or for the feminist movement to progress, it must be supported by the masculinity within society. So it is not the exclusion, which means cognizance of the fact that as women, we have our strengths, but we also have our weaknesses, which are covered up through the male involvement in society. And I think that's very important. Why I say this is I feel along the way, my personal view is feminism has been reconstructed differently, depending on who you speak to, as if it feminists equate male exclusion. I don't think so. It is very important that as we propagate, as we enhance the rights of women and girls, we get the strong men to work with us. So I identify myself as a progressive feminist. And my message to the young upcoming feminists is, yes, harness your strengths as girls, as young ladies, but not to the exclusion of men. <laughs>